For our capstone project, we were in charge of redesigning a bridge on Route 12 in Middlesex, right outside Montpelier. The bridge was originally built in 1919, reconstructed in 1981, and repaired in 2002. We worked with VTrans as our community partner, who gave us a lot of helpful information for our design. Some of the existing issues with the current structure include severe structural instability in the abutments due to cracking. The quality of the deck is adequate, but the only reason the bridge has been able to remain open was due to the recent repairs in 2002. Due to the input from VTrans, we decided to design an integral abutment for our bridge foundation. Integral abutments cost less to construct and require less maintenance than similar sized bridges with expansion joints. The deck and the abutment are fixed, making the whole system act as a moment frame. The first aspect of our design we considered was the slab. In order to properly design the slab, the maximum positive and negative moments that the slab will see needed to be determined. This was done using RISA structural software. Once the moments were determined, we put them into a MATLAB program that we created to solve for the required area of steel reinforcing per foot of slab. We then chose the appropriate bar sizes and the spacings for the reinforcing based off this output. Once the slab dimensions were established, the dead loads from the concrete were considered along with the live loads from trucks and input into a MATLAB code. This program was used for influence lines to find the maximum moment a beam would experience as a truck passed over the bridge. Once this moment was determined, it was multiplied by a distribution factor to determine the design moment for the beams. A composite section analysis was performed to determine the moment capacity of the steel W section. Using the given blow counts from the bore logs, the unit weights and internal friction angles of each respective layer were calculated and tabulated into the soil profile shown. To begin the design of the substructure, the given soil profiles were considered. It is important to note the lack of bedrock on the southern side of the bridge, as the piles on that side will need to be resisted by the soil's frictional properties alone. Once we had completed our superstructure design, the total vertical reactions incident on each abutment were calculated along with the total radial displacements due to the applied live load. To design the piles beneath each abutment, this data, along with the soil characteristics, was input into the program FB Multipeer. Preliminary pile designs were based solely on the axial loads. These HP sections were then checked for their moment capacity against the results returned by the program Multipeer. The piles were analyzed in three sections. The top two segments were subject to moments while the bottom was subject to axial loads only. The unbraced lengths of these top two segments were obtained by interpolating the moment data multi-peer return. Once obtained, these lengths were used to calculate the factor structural pile resistance of each segment and, and evaluated against the axial loads. The nominal fl flexural resistance was also calculated for the upper segments and compared with the ultimate moments incident on them. The entire upper zone of the pile was also checked with an LRFD interaction equation to ensure that it could handle the combined axial and torsional loads. Finally, shear forces were evaluated, although it is very rare for a pile to fail in shear after passing the other checks. Once the piles have passed all the checks mentioned, the maximum stresses the piles can safely handle need to be calculated for driving considerations. During the driving process, the largest concern are tip and skin resistance as the head of the pile will be secured to limit bending. It is important to note that all the values used for design were the maximum outputs given at changing soil depth. Results were considered with the soil six feet below the channel depth to account for scour and make sure the members can handle this extreme condition. Additionally, because the water table on both sides of the bridge is fairly low and the majority of each pile is above the water table, corrosion needs to be taken into account. The final HP sections contain more area than is required to handle the given loads in order to account for said corrosion. During calculations, the lateral earth pressure and surcharge of construction was taken into account when designing the integral abutment and the wing wall. We calculated the two resultant forces for each and placed them on a simply supported beam which would act as our abutment. Maximum moment and reactions were then found to determine the amount of reinforcing steel that was needed for both abutment and wing wall. The wing walls are triangular cantilevered, which was chosen from the Ashto LRFD design manual. In conclusion, we decided upon a bridge with a 50 foot span utilizing five W30 by 124 steel girder sections spaced 7 feet on center and braced with C15 by 33.9 diaphragms spaced 12 feet on center for increased stability. The piles beneath the superstructure will consist of five HP 10 by 57 sections on either side of the bridge installed directly beneath each girder. We hope you've enjoyed our presentation. We've certainly had a good ride. Feel free to ask any questions.